Hi, my name is Webb Fair. I manage all the restoration projects. And uh, this is our latest and greatest project that we're working on. Now, there were only three of these Type 64s ever built. And the first two did get bodied with the Papillon doors. I believe the doors got closed on the factory before they fi got finalized on a body for this car. It took a long time for us to decide who was going to be the best fit to help us design the body. And Stuart, Stuart's been fantastic on this. My name is Stuart Reed, and I chair the Transportation Design Department at Art Center College of Design and uh, I have Stuart Reed design my own studio and in that role I've been supporting the uh, Peter Mullen and the Mullen Automotive Museum on the completion of the 1939 Type 64 Bugatti. No, this is really a very specialty project that Peter uh, has wanted to do for some time. We saw this car back at Pebble Beach I believe in 2002 on the lawn and by April of 2003 Peter was the, the proud lucky owner of it. Uh, when we first saw the car and it drove by on the lawn going up to get an award the dual aluminum chassis just popped out at you. We understood why it had never had a body built for it because the car was so spectacular on its own merit. No one, no one did this sort of finish on these cars in that day, except for, of course, Bugatti. Bugatti was uh, quite the inventor and leader, and so he had conceived uh, the notion of butterfly or papillon doors for this car in 1939. And Peter has archival patent drawings uh, of of that idea. Peter wanted that to be a strong element of the car. So we've done some things, for example, move the geometry a little bit. Uh, the, the doors don't uh, open it at the corners of the roof. They go further toward the center line of the car. And so when they're in the up position, it's definitely sort of a butterfly papillon form. And it's kind of exciting to do what really predated, you know, the Mercedes-Benz gull wing by, you know, a lot of years, 12 or 15 years. So we got a lot of cues. I mean, if you take any one of those corners of this car, if you took a small photograph of it, you would find a Bugatti that had that similar you know, footprint on it. Whether it's the front fenders on this car, the roof line, it's just a little bit more modern than uh, you know, what he ever did build. There was a lot of painstaking research done. We probably visited half a dozen shops before we ended up at Mike Cleves. Looking at this project about nine months later, uh, could, we could not have picked a better shop to do the project. I'm Mike Cleves owner of automobile metal shaping. We're building a new body for this Type 64 Bugatti. If you were to do this, if someone was to design and build a new body today, it would be done based off of a foam core structure. It was very important for us to tell the story the way it would have been done back in the day and doing the buck. The buck was a very labor intensive project to do it this particular way, but it was part of telling that story at the end of the day. Early reskinning when you could buy a chassis, go to a coach builder and get a a body built and we're doing it the same exact method. They would build a body buck and and then hammer or wheel the parts. We hammer the parts and shape it and cover the buck in, uh, in metal, whether it be steel or aluminum. It's a, an incredible privilege to be able to do a project like this one and, and try to do it with the same kind of care and discipline that Jean Bugatti might have done um, or the great coach builders, design houses of the 30s. Our whole concept here is to have a car that not only is beautiful and unfinished, but is totally functional. Still has to be a usable car to be able to go down onto Pebble Beach. And then be able to put it out there and have our lifts on it so we'll be able to raise it up so people will be able to appreciate not only the chassis, but the body. The quality has got to be top shelf. And number two, it's got to be very durable because this car has to, or this body has to be able to go up and down repeatedly at the museum. Our whole concept and idea with this project was to have it a learning tool and be able to have kids come into the museum, people come in and look at the car, see the buck separate from the body and the chassis, three separate sections. This is a little bit different. This buck is going to have a life of its own because it's going to be used to show people that this is how a car was built, you know, uh, as far as from a coach built standpoint. It's going to be dirty from the aluminum where we're touching it. It is, it is what we call it. It's going to be a work in progress. Like it never did get quite finished, but we're on our way. And really to show people in the museum as well that this is how coach work was done, uh, how, it is in pure, how it is in pure finish before it gets painted. You're going to have hammer marks. You're going to have some weld marks. Um, and, and really it's, it's telling the story of how this was really done, you know, 70 years ago. There was a sense of, of truly elegant engineering that exists in a Bugatti product that um, 
the engineering comes through to the surface and it's a, it's a complete holistic statement of, of design and engineering. This car has a whole life of its own. I mean, this, this is going to be a historic project that people down, you know, in a hundred years are going to look at and go, wow, that, that's really amazing and that Peter put his, put his, you know, his hands on it and did it. Because I think it's going to be a spectacular when it's done. I think that if Bugatti was to come back alive and see it, he'd be proud of it. He, he would really go, wow, they, if I was to build a car today, they, I think they really nailed it. I think where we're ending up is, is just right. Be sure to catch all the latest car enthusiast news at AutoWeek.com, in AutoWeek magazine, and on AutoWeek's iPad edition.